Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the beginning of a brand new visual novel adventure. This is Fate Stay Night. Oh my goodness, this has been a very, very long time coming for me. You see, I have kind of a history with the Fate franchise, and indeed, this very visual novel here. So... <laughs> I, in addition to my YouTube channel here, I also maintain a blog on Tumblr where I react to all sorts of anime and cartoons. And at one point, I attempted to react to this visual novel in text form. And that was years ago. I, I didn't get very far because I realized how taxing it would be to do all that. Like, uh, to my understanding, this is a very, very long visual novel. So, if you're interested in seeing my first reactions to the opening first, like, three or four hours of this visual novel in text form from a few years ago, you can check the link in the description. In addition, I should also mention that many years ago, well before starting that pseudo live blog of this visual novel on my Tumblr, I also watched on my own time the Fate Zero anime, which I have been told was pretty much just a non-canon spin-off that like depicted a big what-if situation, so although that anime series Fate Zero clued me in into the basics of how this setting functions, I really shouldn't take any of my knowledge, faded as it will be, into account when I read this visual novel. So yes, I think that's all I have to say to start out. I am just really excited to begin another 100 hour plus adventure. This visual novel apparently has three big story routes. The fate route to begin, the Unlimited Blade Works route, second, and Heaven's Feel, third. And I will be playing them in order. And I am aware that there are certain choices you can make to steer the story in different directions. I have been advised to make saves at all points where I can make choices, and then choose the obvious worst ones to get game mobbers that are amusing or interesting or what have you. Yeah, I think that's going to do it, so I'm excited. Let's begin. Tight Moon Presents It was a thrust like lightning. A spearhead thrust to pierce my heart. Trying to dodge it would be useless. Being lightning, it's invisible to the human eye. I'm not so sure about that. I feel like you can really see lightning very well. Okay, maybe not when, like, strikes nearby. Yeah, no, you can definitely see lightning when you're far away from it and have a clear view, but... If, you're, if someone's tossing a lightning spear at you, no. No dodging that. But... The lightning that tries to pierce me is repelled by the moonlight that tries to save me. Yeah, I, I think light travels a lot faster than lightning. That works. Clang. A beautiful sound. No. The sound before me is heavier than steel. The armor she is wearing is not beautiful at all and as unrefined as the cold night. The sound wasn't beautiful at all. Make up your mind! It was actually the sound of steel. It's just that the night is beautiful enough to turn it into a charming sound like a bell. Ah uh, yes, voice acting. This visual novel has voice acting, and there are arguments, I think, for and against it. Me, personally, 
I want to turn the voice acting off altogether. I want to just do voices for all the characters like I did in Phoenix Wright and just really have fun with it. I feel like just like reading a book, you know, the impact of scenes wouldn't be lessened in the slightest just because there isn't voice acting to go with it. In fact, I think maybe I would even have more emotional resonance with scenes if I actually voice what is being spoken. That would be the best way for me to internalize it and understand it. Of course, I can't understand Japanese either, so uh, there's that. But in the pro voice acting camp, the voice acting is really good. The delivery will be far better than anything I could do. And I'm sure there are some really iconic moments and lines and deliveries that everyone wants me to hear. So I think I'm going to go a few hours into this with voice acting on, make my own decision, and make a call at some point. So for now, yeah, let's just continue. I ask of you, are you my master? She asks in a voice that lights up the darkness. I have come forth in response to your summons. From this time forward, my sword shall be with you, and your fate shall be with me. Now, our contract is complete. So, that armor isn't beautiful. Really. Like, <laughs> come on. I... I can't even call myself a fan of fate just yet. And even I know who Saber is. I mean, setting aside the fact that I watched the Fate Zero anime so many years ago, her design is iconic. Just look at her. She's so cool. Anyhow, I have to wonder, though. I think there might be a slight misdirection going on here. If... There was a thrust like lightning at this orange boy's heart. Why would he and Saber just be chilling right here, you know? I feel like maybe that was a sneaky, sneaky scene from the future, and this was a subtle flash, uh, flash forward. And now we're here at the moment where this guy summons Saber into being. Yeah, I think that's what the case is. Interesting. Yes, the contract has been completed. When she chose me as her master, I'm sure I swore to help her too. The moonlight still lights up the darkness. As if following the night's example, the shed f again falls silent. Time has stopped. The scene lasts less than a second. But I'll remember this scene vividly, even when I've gone to hell. I love that line. That's a good line. <laughs> I think it's a trope that isn't too common. But when you have a character who is dead set on their ideals, and knows the exact course they're making through their life. And they still acknowledge that it's going to send them to hell. <laughs> That's strong. It's strong. The face slightly turned. The quiet green eyes. The instant becomes an eternity. The blue outfit symbolizing her sways in the wind. What wind? Is the window open? Faint blue light filters in. The golden hair shines in the moonlight. Well, that's the start then. The fate route begins now.
This is a story from ten years ago. I'm watching someone I know very well. A tall man with a deep featured face, who to my knowledge has never told a joke, is patting my head. No, that's not quite right. I guess he doesn't know how much strength to use. So to be more accurate, he's grabbing my head and mashing it around. I guess that's only to be expected. After all, that's the first time he's ever patted my head. I'll have to get going now. You know what to do now, right? I answer the deep voice with a polite, yes. The man patting my head nods once, lets go, and stands up. So, that was it. If I'd known that, uh, if I'd known then that it was our final moment together, I would have made him laugh with my best jokes. I had practiced telling jokes a lot, in hope that I could bring a smile to his grave face. I guess you could say I was sad that I couldn't tell him any of them. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Put the association in your debt by the time you mature. I'll let you decide what to do after that. You should be able to take care of yourself. Even though he said such things, I guess he was still worried. He told me about the heirloom jewels, the jewels inherited from the master, and how to manage the basement. As he was telling me all these things I didn't yet know, I realized, even as a child, that most likely, he wouldn't be coming back. A war had started. Not a war between countries, but a war between people. But the only ones at war were seven people. In a situation like this, the word war should be unsuitable, but here it's a different story as the ones in conflict are magi. The seven magi, each from a different faction, had started to compete for unknown reasons and killed each other in unknown ways. The man standing before me was one of them. Yeah, I think this that the girl is describing here is Fate Zero. But, as I said, I'm not going to take my knowledge of Fate Zero into account. But I will say that Ryder was a bro, and I freaking love him. God! Whoops. He, too, was in a position to kill or be killed. He must have known more keenly than I did that his time was near. Oh, I have to... Oh, okay, there we go. Rin, the Holy Grail will appear eventually. It is our duty as a Tosaka family to win it. More importantly, if you want to be a Magus, you can't avoid it. Once more, he patted my head and left. That was the end. That was the last time I saw the man who entered the Holy Grail War as a master and died. The man who was my teacher as well as my father. Take care, father. I see him off politely. I knew I was on the verge of crying, but I shed no tears. I loved him. He was a great father and a great magus. Among magi, there are only obstinate people. In the whole world, I don't think anyone had a better character than his. He taught me as a teacher and loved me as a, as a father. That's why I decided to choose my path according to what he left me in the end. Rin. Rin. The Holy Grail will appear eventually. It is our duty as the Tosaka family to win it. More importantly, 
If you want to be a Magus, you can't avoid it. I feel like I just read that. And by feel, I mean I definitely know. In the end, he left me those words as a Magus and not as a father. That is why at the at that moment, my path was determined. Alright, I'll do my best to be a proper Magus. It's only natural for a student to follow the words of their teacher. Since then, through many twists and turns, I, Tosaka Rin, have matured. It has been ten years since the winter day on which my father went to war. I haven't exactly been waiting for this moment, but I am excited. That's only natural. The event I have never forgotten about is about to start. January 31st, huh? I think. Well, it's immediately apparent that Rin is very well off. Hmm. Something is ringing. Bring, bring. Shut up. Stop it. The sound doesn't stop. It rings loudly as if I'm an enemy. <laughs> uh, just the thought of being enemies with an alarm clock is amusing to me. Uh, come on, I was up late last night, so... It should let me sleep in a bit longer. No, it has to let me sleep in. It, I was deciphering my father's will until early this morning, and I've used up too much magical energy. On one hand, it's kind of absurd that it would take her ten years to get around to reading her father's will, but if, it, if she had to use magic to read it, maybe it just took time for her skills as a mage to develop. In other words, my mind and body are dead tired. Ah, oh, jeez, you're really stubborn. Bring, 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 bring. The alarm clock doesn't speak my language. So why does the ringing sound like it's telling me you're going to be late? Late. Being late is bad. Though, that depends on the situation. I'm a good student. But maybe I can get to school at the last moment just for today. So, so. That's right. I set the alarm 30 minutes early, so I should be able to sleep for 30 minutes more. Huh? Isn't that strange? Set it 30 minutes early? I look at the alarm clock drowsily. The clock is pointing exactly at 7. I usually get up at 6.30, so the spare 30 minutes have already been used up. Oh, why can't I think when I wake up? Hmm. I stare at the alarm clock for several seconds. Shutting it off, I decide to get out of bed. I have tinnitus! How nice for the birds to wait. Passing through the cold hallway, I enter the cold living room. It's kind of funny because these are some very warm colors. I know it's immediately obvious that Ren's talking about temperature here, but still. It's kind of a nice contradiction, I think. It's 7 o'clock on the last day of January. Fuyuki City is usually pretty warm in the winter, but this morning it's as cold as any other city. I can even see my breath indoors. What? And on top of that, there's no one else in the house to warm it up. So, very rich, but no servants. Well, I mean, not yet. 
Yeah, um, I, I, again, I, I, I have read through all this once. I forget most of it. I know the general flow of it. Uh, I will make a very pointed point to say when I will embark into brand new territory, okay? So, yeah. That's gonna be a few videos from now, though. Dumbo, Dumbo. Heater, heater. Turning on the heater, I head to the bathroom. At times like this, living on your own is inconvenient. If there was someone to wake up before me, the living room would be warm by now. I wash my face at the sink. I brush my long hair and get ready. A cold morning, a cold sink. The only advantage is that the cold water clears your sleepiness completely. I tried a cold shower once. Never again. I tie my ribbon and I'm all ready. All I have to do is eat breakfast and head out. Looking at the clock, it's only a bit past seven. And I'm a bit disappointed. Man, I guess I don't have to run after all. Oh, come on, it's not too late. Get a piece of bread, toast it, butter it, put it in your mouth, and sprint out that door! Then again, I would never do anything as clumsy as running to school anyway. It is the custom of the Tosaka family to act with composure and elegance at all times. Taking a custom like that seriously must mean that my family originated from a very high-class background indeed. Owning this old western-styled mansion is proof of that. Oh yeah, it is western mansion. <laughs> that is western architecture. It's like European almost. I didn't really think of that, how odd that is. It was just said in Japan. And on top of it, the Tosaka family is a bloodline of sorcerers able to use the power of... Magic. If you're talking about age, our family has an ancient history. Well, it's not something I can brag about. Actually, I can't speak openly about it at all. Oh, by the way, I, Tosaka Rin, am a mag magus. Who on earth can I brag to like that? Magic is just what it sounds like. Magic. I don't care if you get ideas like abracadabra or whatever. You can just think of us as people who do strange things by casting spells. Yes, that is a mage, yes. Though it's not like we fly around on brooms or make stars appear with a wave of the wand. Why not? Well, we could do that, but we don't bother as it's kind of meaningless. Bruh. Does no one care about style? If I could fly, I'd fly all the time. We're basically heretics who hide ourselves from the world. We're prohibited from standing out, and even if we weren't, we would rather be at home studying magic. Okay, that, that like kind of says a lot, I think. If they're viewed as heretics, that probably speaks to a long history where maybe at one time mages were perhaps more commonplace, more well known about in general culture, and were perhaps prosecuted. Like, maybe the Salem witch trials were something else entirely here. And now, if they're prohibited from standing out, that says to me that. Perhaps governments around the world kind of have them under control. Hmm. On top of that, the word sorcerer is completely inaccurate. To be precise, there are only five sorcerers in the world. Things no one can do, things beyond the ability of modern science. The ones who can make such miracles are the ones we call sorcerers. Ah. Okay, so mages manipulate the elements, manipulate molecules, 
make things happen within the bounds of reality. Maybe. But sorcerers, it sounds like, just sound like reality warpers. Right on. Miracles that can never be achieved, regardless of time or effort, those we call sorcery. Those things that are mysterious but achievable with time and effort, those things we call magic. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. That's why what I do is called magic rather than sorcery. It's complicated, but that's how it is, so just accept it. Sure. To be honest, the modern world doesn't recognize the existence of magi. As we believe, control, and learn things that are immeasurable, our existence is incompatible with the modern world. Because it's kind of meaningless. Going to a normal school and becoming a normal adult will bring you far more happiness than studying magic. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, come on, can you like transmute gold? Get infinite money? No, I'm sure that wouldn't be the case. Human technology is great. In the past few hundred years, it has been leading the way ahead of magic. Nothing is impossible for humans. Miracles once only possible through magic are now tools and not miraculous at all. Still, magic has its good points. Just as there are things possible only through science, there are also things possible only through magic. It was the master of the Tosaka family who said that if science is moving toward the future, magic is moving toward the past. Ah. Uh, something about the past and the future ending up at the same place. Everything always running toward the zero point. Yeah. That probably would be the case, wouldn't it? Though I wonder... What is perhaps stopping new generations of mages from pushing the boundaries of what is capable of magic? what they know. On, other, on the other hand, it kind of feels like mages are very clannish and keep to themselves. Scientists confer with each other all around the world. Studies are shared. Peer reviews are, are made. But if mages just keep to their own family, their own bloodlines, then what possible progress could ever be made? Let's put off all these difficult discussions. We should wait until we're old. Finishing breakfast, I grab my bag. Oh yeah, I should bring the pendant. I don't really want to take the thing to school, but it'd be a waste just to leave it here. This thing is a hundred years old after all. It's by far the greatest jewel in the house. No, that's an understatement. It's much stronger than that. I found this after decoding Father's will last night. It contains the equivalent of ten years of my magical energy. Oh. Oh yeah, I remember this thing. That's right. There was said to be an heirloom, and this might well be it. We, the Magi of the Tosaka, are skilled at the transformation of power. We put our magical energy into jewels whenever we have free time. Yeah, so it's like a it's like a font that can be tapped into outside the ma the mage's own magical energy. Like of course you could use it in emergencies. Just imagine a spell cast with 10 years worth of magic. <laughs> to put it to put it simply, the jewels are bullets and we are the gun. The only other thing I can say I received from my father is the magic crest of the Tosaka family engraved on my left arm. Engraved? In essence, this is the proof of the successor, and it's like a t tattoo that condenses all the inherited magic of the Tosaka family. Okay, a tattoo. That makes sense. 
まだ始まったわけじゃないけど。用心に越したことはないか。But I guess it I put the pendant, which can now be said to be my father's memento, into my pocket. And not around your neck. This is the last resort. Pretty much anything is possible with the magical entity contained in this. It's 7 30. I should get going, or I'll be late to school. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not gonna attempt to read German. Okay, I know that funny looking B is an S. Uh. Yeah, uh. Schleisen verfahren, J. I weave my words with the magical energy quickly. Being a magus, I can't let my guard down when leaving my house. Even though there's never been a single robber. Wandering child nor a stray cat? And I don't think my neighbor has ever come to say hello either. Well, I don't really care. I'm not even a stray cat. What's up with that? And look up at the mansion I've grown so accustomed to over the years. Fuyuki is certainly a strange city with many western styled houses on this side of town, and an area full of Japanese styled houses just beyond the intersection. I guess it's because many foreign families came to live here a long time ago, but even so, I don't see many foreigners around here now. There's a foreigner's cemetery in the new city across the river, but, it's only, but it only has the graves of the first generation of families. I don't know about you, but Tosaka sounds pretty Japanese to me. I wonder how it came to be that they live on this side of the house.、Uh, this side of the, the, the intersection. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the soil of Japan didn't suit them. I'll go to the church and ask the priest sometime. He knows about lots of boring things. It's boring, yet you want to know. Huh? Stepping outside, I feel a certain incongruity. What's up? It's quieter than usual. It's especially quiet with no sense of the morning's noisiness. At 7 30, the street should be filled with students going to school and people going to work. Well, I guess there are days like this. Perhaps everyone slept in today. It's unusually cold, so I bet everyone's still wrapped up in their warm beds. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. But even so, it's strange that I haven't even seen one student so far. At 7 30, you can usually see people in uniform here and there. But I'm the only person at the school gates, and it looks like the clubs are just starting their morning practice. In other words, the only explanation is. <gasps> It's someone! I completely forget this character. Oh, Tosaka. You're up early today. As I suspected. With a small sigh, I turned to the girl who addressed me. Morning. It really is cold today, huh? This girl, speaking so frankly, is Mitsusuri Ayako. Nice. That name is not going to be easy to remember, I think. She's my classmate in class 2A, and there are a lot of stories about her. Good morning, Mitsusuri san. Please excuse the abrupt question, but do you know what time it is? Huh? It's almost seven. Are you still asleep? Was this daylight savings time? I hate daylight savings time. Ugh. She waves her hand in front of me, wondering if I'm alright. She is one of the few friends who knows I am not a morning person. In other words, she thinks I'm not fully awake yet. I guess the clocks at my house were an hour fast. All of them. Not just my alarm clock, but the wall clocks as well. Really, just what's going on here? 
Did father arrange for all the clocks to go mad when the pendant was removed from the basement? I detect magical shenaniganry. Tosaka? Tosaka? Don't worry, it's nothing. Anyways, are you off to morning practice as usual? Yeah, the archery club has lots of problems with students, and one good member quit. So I have to get them to look good to attract the new freshman in April. I see. There's always something to worry about, isn't there? You can say that since it's none of your concern. Oh, do you want to come? The guys will love it if you come and watch. Archery club, huh? I have three acquaintances in the archery club. One is Ayako, the person before me right now. And the other two people are people I barely talk to. And for one of those two, the word acquaintance doesn't really suffice. I became friends with Ayako because I had been watching the archery club from afar. Alright, I'll go if I have to do is watch. If all I have to do is watch. I have nothing else to do this early anyways. Great, let's go right away then. Right now then. I am bad at reading. The impressive archery range is one of our school's outstanding aspects. Perhaps the director is just interested in archery, but the range is much too fancy for a mere school club. Come on. there's still time before practice, so let's go in and have some tea. Happy about something, Ayako drags me in by the hand. It's a bad habit of hers. She talks like a guy when she's expressing her true feelings. As Ayako said, there's no one in here. While sipping hot tea, we prepare for today's class. The tea tastes really good in this open winter environment. Well, I'll come straight to the point. How's it going, Tosaka? Have you found a reliable partner yet? So, as there's no one else around, Ayako comes straight out and asks me a ridiculous question. Huh, that's a really direct way of asking. Judging from your tone of voice, you've already found yours? No comment. No comment. I'm going to keep it a secret until you tell me. So, what's going on? Looking at your tired face, I feel like I'm right. Another no comment. But you can probably see through my lies. Unfortunately, not yet on my part. How about you? I assume you don't have time to take it easy either. True, but things aren't looking good for me. I could get one right away, but it's not that kind of matter, you know? Our future depends on this, so I can't just compromise. I see. So you don't want to choose hastily and lose to me. Ha! <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about, by the way. Of course not. The important part is making you lose. What I get comes second. She laughs boldly. Jeez, we really are alike. Yeah. When we first met, I warned you we'd have this kind of relationship. Yes, she did indeed. I was certainly surprised when at our first meeting, she said, we'll probably end up with a kill-or-be-killed relationship. Or in other words, unless we go all out against each other, we'll never really be friends. I agreed with her on that, and that's why we've had a friend or foe relationship for two years. By the way, why are we talking about this? Why? You're the one who started it, Tosaka. You said there's something wrong with a woman never having a boyfriend, so we decided to see which of us could get a boyfriend before the third year. Aha! Oh yeah, just tit for tat, I suppose. And did we say that Luther would obey the winner for a day? 
Right. Even kids make promises like that nowadays, but it's not like we're sore losers. Whatever the result, the loser will obviously follow the winner's orders. Just thinking about it gets me excited. Ayako laughs. Honestly, she's so serious about this. Mitsuzuri Ayako is such a difficult person to deal with. Though, I can't wait to beat Ayako either, so neither of us are people you want to deal with. Like, come on, you're just ladies. You're both ladies. Just walk up to any man in the school and say, Hey, wanna be my boyfriend? And he'll be like, yes. <laughs> okay, maybe they agree that wasn't allowed. I see, but Mitsuzuri-san, it's fine to enjoy yourself, but you should take care not to get your objectives wrong. You don't know that's not the only point of the contest, don't you? I know. I can't call it a complete victory unless I beat you with a relationship you would really be jealous of. Okay, there we go. Well, that's the biggest problem for us. No matter how good a guy it is, there's no point if we can't bring ourselves to love him. Ayako sighs heavily. To my knowledge, Mitsuzuri Ayako is said to hate men. Rumors are never to be trusted, however. As she suggested this match, rather than hating men, I think she just didn't have a chance. But... That aside. Hold it. What do you mean, us? I'll say it right now, but I'm not cold-hearted like you. I'd have no problem loving the guy. Wow. Hey, different strokes for different folks, Rin. It's not a matter of being cold-hearted. Oh, that's a lie. Or you're fooling yourself. There's no way you'd ever be concerned about a guy. You've never given one good response to any of the confessions made for you. If you had even the slightest interest, you'd think of going out with them. But you keep declining, so it must mean you're not interested in men. <laughs> I think... It's probably a matter of... Rin wanting to keep non-mages at arm's length, you know? You're not thinking enough. Could we say I'm declining because I already have someone I like? Wow, that's a good answer. I like that, it's romantic. Ayako nods seriously, not making fun of me. Her sigh says, Wouldn't it be nice if that was the case? Jeez. I really can't keep anything from her. You're right. I think so, too. Well, it's exactly as she says. I know myself... I know myself how cold I am. I admit it. I know nothing when it comes to love and relationships. Exactly. You're the one who said we're alike. Oh, it's almost seven. Let's leave the secret talk to you there. You never know when someone might walk in on us, and we should act like proper students. Well, I never knew you had social manners like that. It was worth getting up early just to hear that. <laughs> Not so much as you. My social manners are nothing compared to yours. You hide yourself so much it almost seems like you're a different person. Ayako gives an exaggerated sigh. Both of the tea she made are now empty, and it's my turn to make it. So, why don't you join a club, Tosaka? I won't listen to any lies about not having the athletic ability. I'm still better that I lost you in all aspects in last year's physical testing. Oh? But you beat me in lung capacity, and also in weight. Are you calling her fat? 
All right. I'm three kilograms heavier than you. <laughs> the, okay. <laughs> I definitely think. Um, uh, oh my god, I already forgot her name. Ayoka? Ayako? Ayako. I think she hit Rin over the head. Hey, being heavier isn't something to be happy about, you fox. Yeah, Ayako slams on the table. Be careful. You might spill the tea, Mitsuzuri-san. You're the captain, so you should treat this place with care. Shut up. I'm your rival first and captain of this place second. Naturally, if there are no members around, I'll go after you. Ayako looks at me with narrowed eyes. This girl has her own sense of beauty, and she always says, Beautiful people have to do some kind of martial arts. I can get down with that. She's a bold person, experienced in most martial arts. I can appreciate a girl that can kick my ass. <laughs> she joined the archer club with no experience and is now the captain as, it, as if it were only natural. She's probably one of the top three people in school who should never disobey, regardless of gender. Oh, is it a problem to claim you're not the captain if there are no members around? Of course not. I'm the captain in name only, so all I can do is keep an eye on the problem members. There are people better than me, so it's not a very dignified captaincy. Huh. Really? But Fujimura-sensei says that your skills are outstanding. Uh, well, if she says so, that gives me some confidence. Yeah, I guess it's no good to think about people who don't come here anymore. Yeah, Fujimura-sensei said that, I guess I should take being a captain more seriously. That's right. Speaking of which, it's almost time for the club members to arrive, right? I'll get going, but you stand to be a good captain. But you're not going to stay and watch? I wouldn't understand. Watching from a distance is fine, but outsiders shouldn't be in the range, should they? Just as I rise, someone enters the range. Good morning, Captain. Ah, morning, Mato. You're alone this morning. Yes, I'm sorry I couldn't get help. Nah, it's okay. If he doesn't want to come, there's no point forcing him to. Ayako addresses the club member who just entered. Well... I'll be going. See you later, Mitsuzuri-san. Yeah, see you later, Tosaka. Thank you for coming, Tosaka-senpai. Thanks. You too, Sakura. Well then, that was a nice chat. <laughs> Now I know how important uh, archery is to the Fate franchise, but I have to wonder just how important these characters and this club drama is going to be. Like, we know that Fate is about some mages going to war, so I have to wonder how much of a focus the little stuff will get. I mean, I'm not saying that I won't care about it, it's just interesting to me. See, I want to see what the merits are that they're that they'll go into here. I leave the range, trying not to interrupt them. Yeah, Tosaka. Oh, hi, yo. Ah, Tosaka. Good morning. Lucky to see you so early. Bad luck. I've run into someone I don't want to see. Oh, hi, yo, Matokun. Good morning, Matokun. You're early today. Oh, I remember this guy now. It's Shinji Mato. <laughs> I remember his name, Shinji Mato, because I really, really like Neon Genesis Evangelion. 
And the main character of that is named Shinji. Very memorable name. Of course. As the captain, I have to come early as an example to others. This smiling guy is Mateo Shinji of Class 2C. He's the vice captain of the archery club and owner of the hearts of half the girls in this school. Kind of an idol, good looking, has good grades, sociable, and kind to girls. I'm not too well informed on such areas, so I've only heard all this from my classmates. So, <laughs> I wonder if Shinji here... Uh, I wonder if he, like, pesters Rin, like, a sort of attracted to the one girl who doesn't fawn over him. <laughs> kind of like Gaston in Beauty and the Beast. How the whole town's woman just fawn over him, but he only has eyes for Belle, who ignores him. Really? I'm sorry to inter interrupt your good mood, but you're missing a word, Matokan. It's an important word, so I don't think you should forget it. Hmm? Huh? What do you mean, missing word? You're missing the vice part, vice captain. You should watch out. It makes no difference whether you're the captain or the vice captain. But if you put a lot of weight on it, people might think you're concerned about it, right? Wow. You're brutal. <laughs> All right. I'll be careful from now on. Thank you, Tosaka. I've done nothing to earn your thanks, but I guess it doesn't matter if you think otherwise. And Rin wonders why she's perceived as cold. <laughs> Bidding him goodbye, I leave the range. Hold on. You came to watch, right? Then you should stay and watch. You're very welcome here. I'd rather not. I don't want to interrupt the practice. Don't worry about that. If anyone's bothering you, I'll just kick them out. So come in for a while. I'm saying I don't want to be a bother. Besides, it's not like I'm interested in archery. But Baka, I don't like watching people I don't know practicing. What? You don't have any interest in archery? Oh, so that's why you were watching us after school. I don't know what he thinks the reason was, but he's undoubtedly making a big mis misunderstanding. Oh, so you knew, Matelka? Yeah, our eyes met many times, yours and mine. After I shot, you would always be looking right at me, right? I wanted to call out to you, but it's the rules, you know. We can't raise our voice on the range. Ah! Personal space! As if happy about something, Shinji moves in closer to me. His smile carries a sense of superiority. I guess I misunderstood. I thought you liked archery, but... You actually have no interest in it, right? So why were you watching the range? <laughs> it's not like I like you or anything, Baka! Oh, I see now. Yes, the conversation could certainly have been taken that way. Can you move away, Metallica? I really don't like people coming so close to me. Hmm? Oh. Tosaka, what? Honestly, it seems you still don't understand. It's not my style, but I'll put it in terms even you can understand. Matalkan, I'm saying that I have even less interest in you than in archery. Frankly, I never even knew you were in the range, and I'm not about to start looking out for you now either. Ice Queen! What? As if I've angered him, he reaches out for me violently. I easily avoid it and turn my back on him. Goodbye, Matelka. It's good to have Smigo, but you shouldn't let it grow too large. 
と大阪大阪,大阪 Yo He sounds like he wants to say more But it doesn't seem like he's going to scream or come after me Jeez, he really is all show If he was just a little bit more mature He wouldn't be so much trouble for the people around him From the back of the school where the archery range is based, I enter the school building. It's past seven, but I can't see anyone in the hallway. All right, I think that has just about been an hour, so I think I'm actually going to call it right here. Yeah! Ah, man, it's good to be back playing this visual novel. I, um... When I did live blog it on my Tumblr blog so many years ago now, I really enjoy, I really did enjoy it. I like the character art. I love the music. It's very good music. And I am, of course, fascinated with the premise of the Fate series. And I really am a sucker for deep characterizations. Very nuanced characters with so much depth to them. That's that makes them fun to analyze. And I feel like, limited as my experience with this game may be, I feel like that's going to deliver in spades. So yeah. All good stories have slow starts, I say, and I don't care how long it takes to get to the action or the meat of the story. I'm just here to just chill and See where the story takes us, so... Yeah. Hmm, I'm kind of actually considering something. For this video... I did voices for the characters right alongside the voice acting. Maybe next time, I will just read everything in my own natural voice, because I feel like that's where I excel the most when I speak. I... I mean... Let's be real, I have precisely two voices for girls, and there seem to be a lot of girls in this in this uh, this story already, so... I feel like if I just did my regular voice while speaking, the voice acting that's present in this game would do the heavy lifting, and will inform me and you guys of who is, of who is saying what, you know? Yeah, so I think for the next video, I'll try that out. Yeah. Well, anyhow. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been the very first video of Fate Stay Night. I thank you for watching, and hopefully I will catch you next time where we continue and see what's next. So until then, please take care.